Good day, everyone. And again, I say it's good to see you. We just left the bridge building and come over here for Monday's devotion. And uh, it's really been um, at my at my heart to get this out because um, there are some things that we can look at. On one particular word that I'm getting ready to or to let you know, that can mean good or we can put it off. But I'm here to let you be aware of some things and especially that is told by us and given by us of God Almighty. We don't take it lightly. We don't put it off. We believe in it. And my title of this is Why Not? Why not? What, what, do, what do we have to lose? It can be a lot if we look at it in the wrong way. It's good to have you. Glad that you are joining us for Monday's message, because Monday's a tough day if you don't have Jesus with you. If you don't call on Him to get you through the day, you've got to get up. You've got to proceed with what your responsibility is throughout the work week. What your responsibility is in life towards your family and towards you. So I pray that this will be something that can uplift you for Monday. Why not? Father, I thank you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that someone out there that is looking at their life or looking at circumstances in their life will look at it differently once the message that you've given me to share with those are hearing. Father, it's your grace and your mercy and blessings I ask for. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. As I said, the title is Why Not? And I want to go, first of all, to Luke chapter 5. And I'm going to start with verse 3. And it's talking about Jesus. He had... Uh, been on a journey and of course Simon, Peter and all of them had been with him and he had came upon a group and there was two boats there that had anchored in where Simon and them had been out fishing all night and they were cleaning their nets but Jesus just walked over there and, and uh Set in the boat. But he uh, told Peter and them to just push him out a little bit. That way for the multitude of the crowd wouldn't, wouldn't smother him. So he wanted to go out a little ways where he could speak with them. And then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Now, as I said, he wanted to do that because he he didn't want to be smothered. Uh, because when a crowd is coming in, they they don't hold back. But I'm going from uh, skipping a few verses so that we can get to where I'm praying to wind up at. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, you're going to find out a little bit about Simon Peter here because Simon was a little stubborn sometimes. Set in his way sometimes, but Jesus had already been working on him. He was, he was molding him, so to speak, 
so that he could be used in God's Word. Simon, I don't believe, knew how special he was going to be. But Jesus was patient and, and gave him different obstacles that he was going to be facing. And it wasn't over yet either. So in verse 5, But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. But this is the word that I want to get to, that the Lord stopped me when I saw it. They had toiled all night. They hadn't caught a thing. And being a fisherman, that can happen. And I'm sure that, that they were tired, frustrated, and they was just no use in trying to catch anything because they had been at it all night. But Simon said, and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. That nevertheless is still used today. That nevertheless is used by, it was used by me when I was in the flesh. And if you are in the flesh of the world, you're still using it today, whether you be man or, or woman, it doesn't matter. Uh, I noticed that at a time that there was young ladies that they could get in an argument and it seemed like whatever. Because the definition of nevertheless is however, which means I'm not agreeing to what you just said, but however... I'm going to go ahead. And in spite of is the remaining part of the definition. In spite of. Simon is saying, I'm not agreeing with this. I done told you that we didn't catch nothing, been fishing all night. But you being whom you are, now mind you, Jesus had just left Simon Peter's house and his mother, uh, Simon's mother-in-law was sick with a fever. Jesus came in, touched her, and she was well. Simon had saw some miracles that Jesus had already performed. But he's telling a man that he has already seen his works and his miracles. Nevertheless, oh, I'm, I'm going to do this because I've seen some of your work. Not that I'm on a, a, a gun ho about going back out, but you being whom you are. But my mind said that it is, this ain't this is worthless. This ain't this ain't gonna work. In spite of. But in verse eight, when they were out there, Jesus told them to drop their nets. The fish filled up the nets. As a matter of fact, Simon had to call to get his buddies to come and help him get in the, get the, get the nets in because they were full of fish. And when this happened, I believe that Jesus used this particular time because of the remaining of the script, uh, uh, some of the scriptures uh, verses that I'm going to speak, you'll see it. I believe at that particular moment when Simon had to call for help to get the fish in. Because it says in verse 8, when Simon Peter saw the nets, he fell down at Jesus' knees. After, after seeing miracles performed by Jesus, after seeing the things that he had done, cast out demons and everything, why did it take him going out and, and doubting what Jesus had told him to do was going to work, but when he seen it take place, that his mind became where Jesus wanted him to be. Because what's important to me is when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. I believe where he thought the sin was coming in on his part was when he was doubting Jesus. 
That's my belief. That goes back to the to me being in the flesh. That goes back to you being in the flesh of the world. That I didn't believe what he was telling me. I, I, I don't deserve this. When he says, For I am a sinful man, I believe he put shame upon himself because he doubted Jesus. The same thing that I did for so many years and the same thing that I'm asking you today, are you still doubting what Jesus has done? Are you still, are you doubting what Jesus will do for you? Is that why come you're in doubt today? Is that why you're saying nevertheless it may be good to follow and, and, and Jesus, but I, I seem to be content. Things seem to be going good. I've got a house to live in. The, payment, the bills are paid. The job is good. But that can end in a moment. Where it went from no fish to over capacity of fish, that's the difference in having Jesus Christ first in your life is we can struggle and nothing can come of it but an empty net. But when Jesus says, come on, let's go to the deep, you can fill the nets up with fish. That's something me and you cannot do. But that's something that the Jesus, Lord, and Savior can. But we are in doubt of what He can do when we in the world. We go through things in life that we will jump on by a salesperson and take their word. But sometimes we battle to even believe what Jesus tells us. Sometimes we won't even listen to Him when we're out there. We're missing a net full of fish every time that we take it lightly what He's trying to give us and tell us. But as He said, I am a sinful man. Jesus knew that. That's what He was waiting for Him to expose. Get all that out. Get it out of the way. Because where I'm taking you what I want you to do, there'll be no sin within you that you can't overcome and, and have me first that we can't conquer. But in verse 11, he says, So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Jesus said, You will now become fishermen of men. That is where it got to the point as to where I uh, said in verse 8 when he said a sinful man Jesus couldn't have him thinking in that manner because in verse 11 Jesus said and follow him and now you will become fishermen of men. The fisher, fishing days of not catching anything were over as far as fish. But men, he was getting ready to put him out on a journey. Peter's realization of Jesus' divine power and holiness through the catch of the fish was essentially the same as that of Job. As you can remember Job, what he went through. Jesus used the huge catch of fish to illustrate the kind of evangelistic impact Simon would have catching people. Are we willing to go to the deep? Are we willing to go to the end as long as Jesus is directing our path? That's the question. Because we don't want to go to the end in the flesh. He gives us opportunity so many times to get in the boat with Him. Let's go to the deep. Because it'll never get too deep as long as you've got Jesus. If you don't believe it, ask the same man that doubted Him about going back out and fishing again. Because Peter saw Him they saw Jesus walking on the water. They thought it was a ghost. But when Simon called upon him, Jesus said it is I. Simon said, can I come out there where you are? And he says, come on. 
But Simon let his guard down. But Jesus picked him back up. Just say that Simon would have kicked and stomped and never went to the back out to the deep with Jesus at that particular time. We wouldn't have known any more about Simon, I don't believe, because he had refused to proceed of what Jesus had wanted him to do. But he was already in place in the Word, and God wasn't going to go back. So Simon became the rock. Simon became what Jesus wanted him to be. Are we in line to say, nevertheless, because you can look at nevertheless on this side, nevertheless, Jesus, it's not what I feel about it, it's how you say it and how your intentions is because you don't have no bad intentions. You don't have no intentions on leaving me out there by myself. If I'm following you, I'm following you. You've already cleared the path. You already know what's ahead. I know that my reward is there. I know it will be plentiful and more than I can ever accomplish on my own because you said I'll supply your every need. I'll double if need be what you are striving to have a morsel of. I'll double hit, triple hit. And we, on the other end of the never list, in spite of, we are depriving ourselves. And the simplest thing that we can do instead of trying to uh, uh, fight the world on the never list uh, uh, schedule of refusing what he would want us to do and we're cutting ourselves short. In Psalms 7, uh, chapter 8, uh, 18, I want to go there right quick. i go in a little verse. And it adds to me, it, it sort of co coincides because David had some same situations too that he was running into. But listen to what he had to say. In chapter 18, verse 30, it says, As for God, His way is perfect. Nevertheless, God, Your way is perfect. Regardless of how I'm looking at it this particular time, I'm going to look at it because of whom You are, and I know Your way is perfect. The Word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust Him. Nevertheless, Simon Peter says, in the end, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. Are we going to trust you? Are you waiting? What are you waiting on? All you got to do is trust Him. He's not there to do you no harm. He wants to improve your life. He wants to improve your family. He wants to improve you. Uh, your whole circumstances, finances, fat, family and all. But you've got to put Him first. Psalms 18, verse 16 and 19. And I'm going there where it says, He sent from above. He took me. He took Peter that day in that boat. He took David and molded him. He's, he's got our mold. All we've got to do is ask him to take the clay, remold us into the pot that you want us to be. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, which is what you battling and we battle each and every day. From those who hated me, people will. Smile in your face and not wish you nothing good. But Jesus never does that. He always has got the best intentions for you. For they were too strong for me. 
they they comforted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. We're going to have days when we've got a heavy. Got a heavy, Lord. I need you, Lord. 19, he also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. He has love for each and every one of us. He has that joy waiting on us. I would like for you to look at your point in life. Whether you realize it or not, you're being defeated. Flesh of the world is defeating, us, defeating you every, every moment. Every second. And with us not knowing the time when it's up for us, when our last breath is up, that is a chance that you're taking. But nevertheless, I, I, I'm going to put Jesus off just a little bit longer. I would say turn the positive on nevertheless. I'm tired of the life that I've been living. I'm ready to turn over a new life. I'm ready to get into that boat and follow you. I'm ready to take a chance of getting out there on the water. I worry about sinking later, but I've got Jesus on my mind. And even if I do go under, He'll pick me up and put me on solid ground because He told Simon, you will become my rock. Simon Peter is not the only rock that he's looking at. He's looking at you. He's looking at me. Don't fail Him because your time can run out. By this world, you're being defeated by this world without Jesus Christ because God is going to ask, what did you do with, my sac with the sacrifice of my son? How did you use it for the good? Or in spite of, did you just know about it, but you didn't ever take it serious? You may be at a point that something is encouraging you. There's a peace that awaits you. There's family time. A time to look at what really matters in life. He tells us, I will supply your need. The load can be lighter on you. Why not try Him? Why not try our, try our Lord Jesus Christ? I know when he gave me an opportunity, I got stronger. I got just enough to get hungry. And I went from putting him off in spite of, nevertheless, I heard about him. I grew up in church. But nevertheless, he just didn't fit me imagine that thought have you ever heard that from your own self church just don't me and church just don't fit in it ain't about the church because we are the church once we become a child of God it's about where your destination is it's about how you look at things and I pray that you will look at things different Instead of saying, it's not for me. There's nothing that cannot be no more for you than the love and the sacrifice that God gave in order for you to have this choice. As John 15, 16 says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. He's choosing you at this moment, I feel like, to give you an opportunity to turn your life around and get in that boat and go out and become fishermen of men. We love you. We love you here at Shiloh. We, we, we pray to see you soon. Here on 2271 Ultra Mill Road, Godwin, North Carolina. There's a whole bunch of boats here. And we've got brothers and sisters that will paddle you out there. And Jesus will meet you. He'll meet you. He'll meet you in the deep. If you feel like you're drowning today, He's there to pick you up. To pick you up. God bless you. We love you here at Shiloh. And I love you. And I pray to see you soon. Have a blessed Monday.